America's Sexiest Couple, a romantic comedy by Ken Levine. Scene one, hotel room evening, a typical generic Marriott hotel room. A bellboy enters juggling several pieces of luggage. He's followed by Susan White. Welcome to the courtyard, Syracuse. I was told this is the nicest room they have. Oh, it is. It's disability accessible, so the bathroom has rails. Oh my God, I'm camping. Uh, there's lots to see in Syracuse. University, Onondaga Creek Walk, the Erie Canal Museum. You offer room service? Yes, we do. And I'm all set. Please just get the rest. He yeah, exits. Syracuse, bucket list, check. He re-enters with as many bags as before. So how long are you staying? A month? Two nights. All this for two nights. Well, I'm attending a funeral and have yet to decide just how distraught I am. So you brought an assortment. Right, I guess. Oh, uh, they, they told me at the front desk you're an actress. Uh, not were, am, yes. And what's your name again? Susan White. Okay. Seriously? You don't know me? <laughs> I have a fucking Emmy. <laughs> really? Cool. Did you bring it? No, of course not. It's being repolished. <clears throat> so what did you win it for? Playing Jill on Residence. Wait, what's Residence? Oh, just kill me. H how old are you? I'm 22. I'm still in college. And you've never heard of the TV sitcom Residence? No. What's it about? Don't, don't they have a, a history of television courses at your university? Oh, ma'am. Uh, the Wally Thor Truck Master School doesn't have a theater department. Okay. <clears throat> Residence was the number one situation comedy in the 90s. It runs six times a day on Antenna TV. Wait, what's that? Residence is about a group of young doctors at a Chicago hospital. Craig McAllister also starred. Oh, I know Craig McAllister. He's a cool dude. I see him in everything. Yes, wonderful. Well, uh, he plays Jeff and I play Jill, who was top of her class, and the rest of the residents are lovable oddballs. Sounds like 30 other shows. Well, ours was better written. And the crux of it was that Jeff and Jill are, and their on again, off again romance. For five years, we were considered America's sexiest couple. We pretty much defined sexual tension in television. Thank God that shit is over and we now just hook up. Oh, I am sorry, young man, but then you are missing out. There's nothing more delicious than the anticipation it heightens the experience, accentuates the pleasure, deepens the emotional bond. You call that sexual tension? I call it no one wants to do you. Trust me, that was not the case. Oh, Wait, so you guys hooked up in real life? Um, isn't that a little personal? Sorry, uh, it's just that if you were America's sexiest couple, then you had to have some kind of mad chemistry. And when that happens, boom! Eggplant emoji. We were acting. <laughs> That's what good actors do. Uh, so in other words, no. Do you want a tip or not? Okay, I'm leaving. Thank you. She hands him some money. Thank you. You know, uh, Craig McAllister's staying at this hotel. Oh, well, I'm not surprised. We're going to the same funeral. Can you introduce me? Out. She practically pushes him out. Susan begins unpacking. There's a knock at the door. She answers. It's the bellboy. Uh, I forgot to ask. Can I get a cell phone uh, selfie with you? All right. Awesome. Oh, man. Not, not many celebrities come through here. He enters, whips out his iPhone, poses with her cheek to cheek, and clicks. Now I've got you and Baba Booey. Who? Thanks again. He exits. Susan goes back to unpacking. Another knock. Christ, what now? Exasperated, Susan flings the door open. It's not the bellboy. It's Craig McAllister. Oh. Hi. 
Hello, Craig. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How long has it been? 25 years. Oh, Jesus. I know. You look good. So do you. Uh, I've gotten gray. Oh, it looks distinguished. You have more color in your hair than me. <laughs> it's a dye, you idiot. Right. Uh, can I come in? What? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, please. The answers. I thought you were the bellboy wanting another selfie. What happened to the good old days when people just went through our trash? <laughs> I still get some letters from prison. What does it say when your biggest fan was just executed? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to see you. You too. A beat, and they hug tightly and hold it for five seconds, 10 seconds. This is getting a little long, don't you think? Absolutely. She still holds it for another beat, then releases. So, you still living in the Palisades? No, I moved to Malibu, a little cottage, but it's right next door to Barbara Streisand. Oh, that must be nice. She sued me three times. <laughs> for what? I'm not taking down my Christmas lights soon enough, filling sandbags with sand from her beach. And I, I don't know, not liking Yentl. You still live in Bel Air? No, no. Once Elliot left me, that shithead, I didn't need that big house. So I now I'm in a cozy two bedroom condo in Encino. But I, I love it. I, I really do. It's, it's close to the studios, the Sepulveda Dam. Well, that's great. Wow, 25 years. How can that be? Are you sure it's that long? As of March 14th. Oh, right. You have that thing. You can't, you can remember every meal you've ever had. It's called Superior Autobiographical Memory. And yes. Okay, quick. October 12th, 2003. It was a Tuesday, cloudy. Had the chop chop salad for lunch from Palomino, stayed home that night and read Da Vinci Code. Wow, like what a superpower. You could do a tax audit without any receipts. There was a series a few years ago about a woman who had that ability and used it to solve crimes. Yeah, I forget the title. Unforgettable. It's right. Anyway, I went up for the lead and back when the show was still called The Rememberer. <laughs> a great title that was, but I didn't get it. They, they didn't believe me in the role. That's crazy. Now, if the show had been called The Getting Older-er, I might have had a shot. Oh, you could always make me laugh. <laughs> me too. So March 14th, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, it was our... Fifth season rap party, Danny got so drunk he sat in the cake. Huh. Thus staking his claim as a comedic genius. He was funny on our show. And now he's in shtick heaven. Why did he have to drink? Why did he have to be from Syracuse? Danny's the first cast member to go, you know. Yeah, I, I thought that too. It's, it's a disturbing, foreboding thought. And he's our age. We were all in our 20s when we did that show. What? What? No, you and I were the exact same age. We were in our 30s back then. Well, yes, but I was playing her at 29. All five years? No, just the first three. What's the difference between playing 29 and 30? Well, I, I have a specific process whereby I assign various traits, both emotional and okay. physical. Okay. Yeah, got it. The Thanks. Well, what was your process? Read the script and do it. Interesting. Interesting how? Nothing, forget it. No, no, I, I want to hear, what is it? Well, there were times, I mean, not, not often, but occasionally where you would s sacrifice conviction for expediency. Oh yeah, when? August 5th, 1991. You gotta be kidding me. August 6th. 
August 8th. Okay, okay. Well, there were times when you were so wrapped up in your uh, emotional actor truth bubble or whatever it was that you were hard to play with. When? November 2nd, 1992. November 3rd, 1992. We had di very different acting styles. Let's just leave it at that. And who's to say they didn't have an equally fine drama department at Juilliard and Boise State? Yeah, well, we had a better football team. No one at Juilliard has ever even been to a football game. So where do the students go every Saturday afternoon in the fall to get drunk with their classmates? Auditions. Right. So, you know, there must have been times you thought I nailed it, right? January 27th, 1993. Thank you. And... So it had rained earlier in the morning. I had a tuna sandwich for lunch. The movie Chicago had just come out. It's easy. I've missed that. You never let me get too full of myself. And you never let me get too full of myself. Jesus, so that was you toned down? Very funny. Haven't seen you in any movies lately. You see every movie I'm in? Yes, all five. Yeah, well, things have slowed down. It's been pretty much television for the last six, seven years. 11 years for me. I'm kidding. Yeah. Hollywood's target male demo no longer wants to fuck me. Yikes, that's brutal. How do I argue? What do I say? Ask anyone at San Quentin. <laughs> There's still some great roles for women. Some, yeah. But the decline begins slowly. Instead of offers, they're, they're asking you to read, to audition. That's code for run to the plastic surgeon now. And, and then you're not reading as often, even with your new rack. You blame your agent, your manager, and you fire everybody, but your new team is no better. And you start to realize it could possibly, maybe conceivably, perhaps, for chance, be you. So you test the waters. You take a young lover. You feel like Mrs. Robinson, and that ends when he doesn't know who the Eagles are. And finally, you surrender. No more leading lady roles, no more romantic leads. From now on, you'll be playing moms, the world's most thankless role, telling Tim Allen or Ray Romano that they can't sell one of their children for whiskey. What a killjoy. Or, or you'll be playing character parts, judges, frontier women, nuns. Check it out. In a, in a, mark my words, in a few years, you are going to see nuns on TV with the world's greatest tits. Oh, and, and all those great roles for women, there are seven of them a year. And Nicole fucking Kidman gets them all. Wow. And just so you know, I'm not at all bitter. We men have it easier, I will admit. Men drive the movies and TV. Target women still want to fuck them. The men would go to jail if they did, but still. And, and men have the power roles, although now that we're open to some transgender possibilities, Nicole Kidman could get some of those too. Well, I'm glad you're not bitter. Actors support each other. It's what we do. Right. Well, age catches up to all of us. I'm doing Coke Zero commercials now. Okay, I, I'm still doing other things, but I'm doing Coke commercials. Yes, I have seen them. How, how was I? You honestly care? Look, I value your opinion, which I know I'm going to get anyway. Maybe my conviction wasn't in line with my emotional thirst or whatever. You were great, Craig. You really think so? I laughed, I cried, I burped. <laughs> You're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm in no position to criticize anyone for doing a commercial. I did a Chuck E. Cheese ad. Jeez, ouch. And still I had to sell my house. I love that house. I'm so sorry, Susan. God, we're in a terrible business. Yes, we are. When people ask me what, what Hollywood is like, I always say that it's like a delicious Tootsie Roll pop with a turd at the center. His phone rings. Hello. Yes. You're with who again? Well, the New York Times, yeah, cool. 
Well, we're all very saddened by Danny Ventura's death. He lived to make people laugh and he made the world laugh. I'd, I'd say that's a life well spent. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very nice. I've been feeling calls all day. Are you really upset over this? A little, I guess. I, we never stayed in contact after the show. It's amazing, you're so close. You're like a family during production, but once the, that ends, everybody scatters to the wind. I'm giving a eulogy. How about you? Well, I was not really a fan, but out of respect for the show, I felt I needed to attend. Well, that's nice. Although I have to say, I'm a little hurt. Why? Well, no one from the show reached out to me about this. I, I had to learn of his death from Funny or Die. Well, to be fair, when did you ever reach out to any of us? You didn't come back for the last episode, none of the reunions. I was going through a lot of personal problems. For 25 years? I'm very layered. Okay, but don't be surprised if you get a few frosty receptions from the cast tomorrow. No, oh, I, I expect that. Although it's unwarranted, I did not abandon them. I fulfilled my contractual obligation and left to pursue other offers. Any of them could have done the same thing. They're character actors. Other offers for them are supermarket openings. Oh, swell. Turn up the guilt. Now I'm going to feel like an idiot tomorrow crying at the funeral. You'll work it out with them. I'm just giving you a heads up. Thank you. I think. As far as how much press this thing is getting. Well, our little show must still mean something. Who'd have thought that at the time? Who'd have thought that 30 years later, people would still be watching Residents? 30 years seemed like forever back then. Now it feels like a blink. It's not fair. The show should move forward and we should stay frozen in time. God, what a wonderful period, huh? People adored us wherever we'd go. The paparazzi, the swag, all those superficial things that we publicly say that we hate, but we really love. <laughs> America's sexiest couple. Sigh. We were television royalty. Yeah, and I've spent the last 25 years trying to get that back. Me too. No success. Residence is our great white whale. I was guessing on some stupid procedural, NCIS, uh, Pittsburgh, I don't know. It was three in the morning. I was literally in some sewer covered in green slime. I was supposed to be exposed to toxic waste or something. An extra, also in slime, was looking at me real sad. I, I knew what he was thinking. I said, I bet you're wondering why I, Craig McAllister, am standing here in this shithole. He sheepishly mumbled, yeah. And I said, with reverence, because I was good. I was really good. Yeah, it was. But part of that goodness was our youth, which we can never get back. I know. But to think back when I was young and all those days I squandered, all those precious days I wasn't photographed. I'd laugh, but that's come up in therapy often. So how are you doing, Susan? Really? Well, besides the house, I'm doing okay. I still get some guest star roles. Did Young Sheldon twice. Made a Lifetime movie that just aired about teen pregnancy. Isn't every Lifetime movie about teen pregnancy? <laughs> the network logo should just be an ultrasound. <laughs> Plus, I continue to dabble in theater. Last fall, I spent a glorious month in Hawaii doing love letters. Oh, I did love letters once in Boston with Bernadette Peters. I did love letters on Oahu with Channel 2 news anchor, Jill Moore. A news anchor? He was fine. He was very sweet. And he held for laughs, which you don't see many newscasters doing. Um, do you want a drink from the honor bar? Yeah, I'll take a $20 beer. Sure you don't want a Coke Zero? I wouldn't use that stuff to shampoo my dog. She hands him a bottle of beer and pours scotch into a glass for herself. Thank you. So what should we toast to? To us. To us. To Jeff and Jill. That's not us. Sure it is. No, it's not. It's a better version of us. How can you say that? We were America's sexiest couple. 
we were acting. Th those were characters. There wasn't a real part of you that went into that character? Well, yeah, I, I suppose. It was a real part of me. How much? 43%. How, how do I answer that question? Don't you think over five years we evolved into them? The writers did. They started incorporating our traits and quirks. And okay, but I, I don't... Between us, you were just acting that or, or even most of it? Yes. I don't believe it. Not for a second. I had to. Craig, I was married at the time. So were you. Jeff and Jill were having sex. We never did. That's a big quirk. The writers weren't able to incorporate. So I had to compartmentalize. Jeff and Jill on one hand and me and Elliot, that shithead on the other. What about you? I mean, how, how did you reconcile it? New kids. Good reason. And you could be really infuriating. At okay, time. well, yeah, yeah. Okay, kids, having kids does change the equation. But I longed for you. You did? You didn't long for me? No, not really. What? I'm just gonna sit here quietly until you admit the truth. Okay, yes, I wanted you to. Knew it. I, I, I can't believe I just told you that. Matthew Perry owes me money. What? You bet on that? He said you had better taste, so it was my honor at stake. What? Well, wait, that, that didn't come out right. Well, the point is we've now revealed something very personal about ourselves that we couldn't share at the time. Right. Something so intimate we could only discuss it with Chandler Bing from Friends. Hey, I was betting on us, okay? And, and I knew it was a lock. I was catnip back then. Oh, so how did you handle the pent up desire, the secret lust, the fire in your loins? What do you think? Same way the guys in prison handle it. On the one hand, I'm appalled. On the other, take that, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> but since we're being honest, it wasn't just that. No? No. There were times I was with my wife and I, well, I, I imagined you. Oh, God. I don't, I don't mean to embarrass you. No, no. no uh, I'm, I'm flattered. How was I? You were great. I laughed, I came, I slept. <laughs> Touche. What did you do to relieve the pressure? I want an Emmy. Oh, come on. I was honest with you. A woman doesn't share that kind of intimate information. Oh, very well. No, I did not think of you while I was with my husband. I could not do that to you. So I resorted to, you know. Okay, got it. I shopped. Huh? That's what you know means to you, shopping? Yeah. I mean, I would have saved a lot of money if I just fired up a vibrator. What, what, what does go all the way mean? The outlet stores in Camarillo? So, so you were never tempted? I think we're treading into dangerous territory here. Why? Because what if I say no, I wasn't? Then I'll just applaud you for your resolve. Fine. No, I wasn't. Why not? See, I told you. I, I don't believe you. Were you ever tempted? We're talking about you. Why do you always do this? Why do you always have to push? Hey, you're the one who brought up the heat in the first place. I don't want to discuss why I never jumped your bones. All right, so instead of sleeping with me, you'd rather long for me but sleep with your wife? That's sick. You're not going to let this go, are you? I need an answer. I have a bet with Lisa Kudrow. Okay, you want to know the real reason? The honest to God, you're not going to like it reason? Yes. I alluded to it earlier. There were times the idea floated by me. See? But then you would stop rehearsal and want to talk to the director about your character for an hour. And that was the ultimate ice bucket challenge. Chill. 
was a very difficult character to play. You would talk for hours and hours and hours. I was walking a fine line between her ambitious competitive side and her vulnerable, lovable side. If not handled very deftly, the audience would hate her. And hours and hours. Okay, that's not fair. It's the same character every week. At, at what point do you just figure it out? But she had different emotions. The given circumstances changed. Told you you weren't going to like it. How did Jill handle the courtship? How did Jill handle the aftermath of sleeping together? Each step in the relationship required exploration. Oh, we got to the moon faster. Uh, but you know, besides, I fought for you two. You benefited from my persistence. Hey, I didn't need you to fight my battles. Well, you needed somebody because you never spoke up. Maybe I was just satisfied with my character. Well, then you weren't paying attention. Look. I work with some pretty fine actors. Meryl Streep, yeah, Meryl Streep. One scene, one time, but still. And she never held up rehearsal for 12 hours to discuss her emotional center or inner child. Oh yeah? Well, maybe she should have. Meryl Streep made She Devil. You made Hatchet High School. Oh, that is low. And Hatchet High School too. Uh, and you could have been great if you just worked harder. Excuse me? If you put more time and effort into acting and less into catnip, you would have had a far more successful career. Hey, I've taken acting classes. Oh, uh, with who? Pepe Le Pew? No, Lou, uh, Lou somebody. But he, he couldn't have been that bad. I have an Emmy, just like you. Well, you should have five Emmys and I should have six, but that's another story. Yeah, well, I have a little secret for you. Acting is not that fucking hard. The key to it is just be natural. Spencer Tracy had it right. Just say your lines, don't bump into the furniture. But when you do that, you're just limiting your range. My range is I've got a nice smile. I still have my hair. You're selling yourself short. Okay, I also look good in the tux. Do you know why you were all, always asking, how was I? Because inside, you know you could have done better. Your subconscious is saying, did I get away with it? Will this be my time? My shortcomings are finally exposed. No, I ask those questions because I like to get compliments. You're so vain. Of course I am. I'm an actor. Well, why do you even need my compliments? You live in Malibu. Okay, okay. There it is. Now I see it. See what? This is all about you cutting me down to size. No, wanting to make you better. Yeah, right. I live in Malibu, so obviously I've sold out. Well, have you? Yes, of course. Aha! Uh -huh. So have you. Only to keep my house. Susan, here's the other thing about acting. Someone has to hire us. Writers just need a computer and a Starbucks. We can't afford to be that choosy. Even us, even after being big television stars, time moves on, people forget, and awards mean shit. Does anybody remember the, ja the Jackie won an Emmy? September 20th, 1987. Stop doing that. Look, the night of the final episode of Residence, you weren't there, of course. We were all in Chicago at the Drake Hotel. 84 million people watched that episode. Think of it, 84 million people. And the streets below were jammed with fans. They couldn't move. When the show was over, I leaned out the window and I waved to them. They went bonkers. One of the writers, as a goof, leaned out next to me and he also waved. No one knew who he was, of course. He was a writer, but the crowd continued to go nuts. He said to me, I don't know, I'm starting to think they're cheering for you, not me. And I said, yeah, but a year from now, you'll be working. Well, that's ridiculous. Of course you'd be working a year later. I didn't know that. Not for sure, not really. All I knew was that the next day I was back in the pool. Do you know how hard it is to have an inflated ego and be insecure? See? That's the kind of conflict you can use. Oh no, actors speak. It's perfectly valid. Accept mixed emotions, embrace them. Let that struggle inform your art. You don't think I do that already? No, I most certainly do not. Well, I do. Really? Give me one example. Fine, our show. What about our show? For five years, every day, every minute, every second, I wanted to sleep with you and I wanted to kill you. 
Well, you certainly weren't sleeping with me. And you should have been very, very afraid. Fine, fine, fine. Go off and do whatever you have to do to keep your little Malibu beach pad. Fill your money bags and your sandbags. What do I care? After tomorrow, we go our separate ways again. Yeah, uh, see you in Driving Miss Daisy in Iowa with Al Roker. Yeah? Well, let me tell you something, Craig McAllister. Every time from now on you're doing a scene or a Coke commercial, you're going to think of me. Like the telltale heart. You are going to wonder if you are performing up to my standards and you're going to push yourself as a result. You will hear my voice. I always hear your voice. Everyone hears your voice. What's that supposed to mean? It means, I'll tell you what it means. It means, I never said this to you before because I'm a nice guy and I never want to hurt your feelings, but I always wanted to. Tell me what? Shut up. Hey. Once, just once, please. And let you merrily trash me? Have one unexpressed thought, just for the novelty of it. You are so out of line. I, you, you think it's just me? It's the cast. Didn't you ever notice that when one of us drove you home after a shoot night, we'd run red lights, cut people off, pass ambulances, drive on the sidewalk? You'd be doing a blow by blow on the filming and we'd be turning corners on two wheels. I am a verbal person. That is part of my process. Oh, you process, actors speak again. Language is what separates us from lower animals and the South. You know, uh, on award shows, when winners take too long to finish their speeches, they play that music that tells them to get off the stage. You should have an orchestra follow you 24 seven. Everything I say is of substance. Yes, but it's constant. You know, that, that's probably why Elliot left you. He just couldn't take it anymore. What? How dare you? You pushed me. He left me because he wanted children with someone else. And why did Tina leave you? You didn't show her any effort either? No, she left me because of you. Me? We never did anything. Yes, but to the world, we were America's sexiest couple. She felt like the other woman, even though she wasn't. We go to some function together, people would look at her and it was like, what are you doing here? Who are you? That's not what she signed on for. You sure? You sure that's the reason? Oh, Rick. For Hollywood. Da, 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 Hollywood. I will tell you why she left, and you're not going to like it. You were on top of the world, 84 million adoring fans. You could have done anything, anything, starred in movies, way more than five, formed your own production company, TV, Broadway. You could have had the Malibu mansion. You could have told Streisand that Yentl was shit. I'm still doing way better than you, honey. I was a drug mule on Breaking Bad. Yeah but you never really pushed yourself. So from where you once were, you let it slip away from Dom Perignon to green slime and you became sullen and bitter and impossible. How do you know? Because that's how I was. No, in this case, it was us. The major depression came later. And for your information, once your big hit TV show is over, no one really captures the brass ring again. We fool ourselves into thinking we do. What about Tom Hanks? All, all right, so one. Will Smith, Goldie Hawn, Jennifer Aniston. Shut up. Steve Carell. Oh, okay, okay, that's it, we're done. Oh, it, it just kills you that I'm right, doesn't it? The Pope called, he wants his hat back. <laughs> You're threatened. You're pitiful. I may not have autoimmune x-ray memory, but Susan, I do recall this. You can be the drama queen from hell. You plebeian. You had it coming. You've gained weight. Oh, okay, now it's turning ugly. You had it coming. At least I eat food and not scenery. Ooh, you wanna go for the jugular? Fine, you're no actor. You're just a member of the fucking Lucky Club. And you're living in goddamn Encino. Go, get out of here, leave, scrap. He starts for the door. You know, a person who can shut up would only have needed one of those. Go! I close the iron door on you. 
Oh, seriously? Even your outbursts are theater references. Get the fuck out, you son of a bitch. Better. His phone rings. Hey, Rick, what's up? You're kidding. No way. Her phone rings. What? Oh, hi, Karen. You just found out what? All of us? Are you serious? I, 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 I don't I don't believe it. I'm going to need time to process this. All right. I'll, I'll get back to you. Oh, uh, thanks for calling. CBS wants us to do a reboot of Residence. I know that was that was my agent. I guess the response to Danny's death really got their attention. I'll say. Wow. Well, well, Grace did well again. So did six other shows. Sure wish they'd called 10 minutes ago, though. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Did we say anything we could take back? Mm, did I call you a psycho bitch? No. Okay, good. I'm sorry, I, I, I called you weak. You never called me weak. Really? Oh, then never mind. We both said a lot of things we didn't mean. In addition to the ones we did. Right, well, I'm sorry I said anything. Thank you. Are, are you just saying that because of the call? Just accept my fucking apology. Right. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry too. Although some of the things that you, I'm sorry. Sorry too. His phone dings. Oh, they're, they're texting me the details. Her phone dings. Me too. Thirteen on the air. Keep this hush hush. But the cast doesn't need to know yet. Oh Jesus. This only goes forward if we both commit to it. This can't be happening. I need another drink. He crosses to the honor bar and grabs another beer. That's an ungodly responsibility. Great timing. Now I have to face the rest of the cast tomorrow at the funeral. Which is precisely why they told us now to jack up the guilt. Swine. The CIA can learn from CBS. Well. What do you think? I don't know. Things won't be the same. 30 years is a long time. Yep. It's a lot of water under the bridge, which hopefully we didn't just burn. Our decision will affect a lot of people. We've, we've, we've got to at least keep an open mind. You're right, but we must also be true to our hearts. This is a life-changing decision, and we cannot allow ourselves to be pressured or seduced by the network or anyone else. There's a knock at the door. Susan answers. It's the bellboy with a giant fruit basket. Uh, this is from CBS. <gasps> fresh pineapple. I love fresh pineapple. Oh my God, Craig McAllister? Christ. Hi there. <laughs> this is such an honor, holy shit. Uh, uh, can I take a selfie? Wait, 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 better yet, uh, you take it. They pose. Susan takes the photo and hands it to the bellboy. There you go. Awesome. Thanks. The tops of our heads are cut off. I'm not Annie Leibovitz. So, uh, what do you think of Residence? He's never seen it. Really? He was always on at a bad time. What do you consider a bad time? Before I was conceived. Susan pulls her wallet out from her purse and removes a $50 bill. Well, your feedback would be very useful. Can't tell you why, it's still hush hush, but once you've seen it, is this something that you would watch if they say made new episodes? Here is $50. Please screen an episode or two tonight and get back to us in the morning. Cool. I was gonna watch anyway to see Mr. McAllister, but uh, thanks for the free money. <laughs> 50 bucks, that's the greatest tip ever. Swell. 
Uh, but there are conditions that go with the $50. You must give the show your full undivided attention. No surfing the web, no texting, no email, no posting photos on Instagram, no tweets, no status updates, no Tinder, no video games. Oh boy, hands to 50 bet. Yeah, not worth it. What? You're giving up $50? No show is worth having to pay attention. Craig hands to Bellboy at 50. Keep it anyway. Wow. Mr. McAllister, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to really like you in the show. Please leave. Right. Uh, well, enjoy the fruit basket. Uh, Mr. McAllister, I'll put yours in your suite. Bellboy exits. You have a suite? I'm the new spokesman for Marriott. Can you believe that Millennial has never seen Residence? The reruns are on day and night. How often do you watch reruns? Never. Really? Never? I don't like to dwell in the past, except to remember every single minute of it. Well, I think it would be helpful in deciding whether to go forward to go back and see the original version. Susan grabs her laptop out of her luggage and joins Craig on the couch. How often do you watch the reruns? Every so often I'll come across one and, and stay, if it's one of our years. Oh. Well, I hope they hold up. Oh, they do. But Lexus used to sponsor us. Now it's Lexa Pro. <laughs> We're also on Netflix. Uh, uh, go to the post-Super Bowl hour episode where we kiss for the first time. That's a good one. All right. It's near the middle, I believe. Yeah. Just you and me in the scrub room. Yep, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. That scene. Oh God, we look young. God, we do. We look young. <laughs> we were we were hot together. Yes, we were. We really were. Really, really were. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Get to the goddamn kiss already. <laughs> Rental discretion advised. Oh, how long does it take to wash your stupid hands? Oh, the soap was so thick. Mm. <laughs> Finally, we're coming to it. This scene is also very funny. Oh, who gives a shit? I swear, it's like we're back there. I know. And it's not just my memory. I'm wearing the same perfume. And you the same cologne. Okay, here we, here we go. Remember the lines? Our first tension Nemo hemothorax surgery. I love the way you suck the air out of his chest cavity. Thank you, doctor. God, you're exciting. Take me, stat. You swept up in the moment, Craig and Susan fly into each other's arms and share the most passionate, toe-curling kiss of their lives. Oh my God, oh my, oh my God, what just happened? Hey, at our age, how, how nice that it still could. I guess so. When we did it 30 years ago, it sure wasn't like that. No way, and this was the first take. If, if you're looking for explanations, it was a kiss free of former spouses and inhibition, role-playing, and awareness of being- I'm not, I, I'm not, don't spoil it. Right, then let me just say, yowzer. Perfect. So, where do we go from here? Take two. A kiss again. You're not currently in a committed relationship, right? No, not at all. You? Not since May 8th, 2015. A a and you take necessary precautions, right? Well, for me, that means not telling him where I live, but yes. <laughs> Fuck me or I go shopping! They passionately kiss again. Now. Right <laughs> now. Hang on. Let me take my Viagra. What? Take Viagra? Mm-hmm. I, I don't even need water. 
Viagra takes a while to kick in. Usually 20 minutes, for, but for me, more like 15 because I'm very virile. Won't that dissipate the mood to some extent? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Start without me and then I'll catch up. Oh, silly. We'll just have to keep the mood going in other ways. She kisses him. Wait a minute. So you just happen to have that Viagra with you? Yeah, yeah, you never know. In your breast pocket? Ready to go? Mood, Susan, stay in the mood. You came over here anticipating that this might happen. Didn't you? No. You didn't prepare for this in any way. Certainly not. If I opened your purse, I wouldn't find candles or massage or, or astroglide. Well, every woman keeps astroglide. Every woman on Hollywood Boulevard, maybe. Okay, yes. In the off chance that this might occur, I planned for contingencies, but there are no candles in my purse. They're in your suitcase. Yeah, and I'll be damned if I remember which one. Look, all this means is we've carried a torch for each other for 30 long years. I mean, this was inevitable. You just needed the right time and place. Yes, a funeral. Like I said, when I look at you, you're still 30. Oh, you melt my heart. 29. Right. But you know what scares me? Viewers still picture me that young. If we come back, will they be disappointed? First of all, you still look great. Second, God knows what they look like today. And third, this is a great topic for tomorrow. Do people still call you Jeff? Uh-oh, I feel a talk coming on. I used to hate it when people called me Jill until they stopped. And I'm just the opposite. I enjoyed it back then, but I don't care for it now. Why? I, I don't know. I, I like to think I've moved on, but... I never remarried, and when people still call me Jeff, it's a constant reminder that I'm just fooling myself. The only difference between me and Jeff is he doesn't need Viagra. No, the difference between, the difference in is Craig's love making scenes are not subject to network censors. <laughs> she leans in and they kiss it. Okay, back on track, seven minutes to go, tops. Would a cock ring speed things up? You have a cock ring? It was an impulse buy at the 99 cent store. No, I, I'm, I'm good. I can't believe you have a cock ring. I wonder if any of this fruit has aphrodisiac powers. She pulls out a banana. Ooh, what do we have here? That might be something. Mm. Yes, it might definitely be something. Mm -hmm. Here. What? The potassium, it'll increase your blood flow. No, no, you're supposed to eat it. Huh? Me? Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, okay, now we're back up to nine minutes. His phone rings. I'll eat it. I'll cut it up. Uh, that's worse, excuse me. Hello? Associated Press, yeah, sure. Well, we're all very saddened by Danny Ventura's death. He lived to make people laugh and he made the world laugh. I'd say that's a life well spent. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Thanks for calling. That must be the 10th one today. Meanwhile, I haven't received one. Well, you weren't with the show for the last four years. Well, still, I, I was a big part of it and, and it doesn't have to be all, but one media outlet can call me. Oh God. Listen to me, how pathetic. I'm on my knees to bloggers. Does the media think of you as Jill from Residence or a movie star? A, a movie star would be fine if I were one. Well, you were then. No, no, no. I was in the movies, but I was never the breakout star. I never got that labor union organizer or schizophrenic housewife or immigrant with a foreign accent role that puts you over the top. There's also a lot of luck involved. You know that. Of course. The planets have to line up. The zeitgeist has to smile and you have to marry Tom Cruise at the right time. You really hate Nicole Kidman, don't you? <laughs> no, 
I'm sure she's a lovely person and no role is worth having to listen to Scientology bullshit, but she has four houses on two continents. What about you? Why, why don't you hate Tom Hanks? First off, no one hates Tom Hanks. And, and see, this is just the kind of stuff, the kind of thing that we shouldn't be talking about when we're trying to keep a romantic mood going because once we get into career regrets, no amount of Viagra will be enough. You don't have any career regrets? I don't need to. You have them for me. He kisses her. I see what you're saying. We can save our career regrets for the post-coital glow. I've always loved your perfume. Thanks. I remember that episode when we were wound up in an epic wrestling match rolling around on the- December 3rd, 1994. I didn't change my clothes. I drove home in my show wardrobe because it smelled of you and your perfume. I went to bed still breathing in that scent and imagining I was sleeping next to you. Oh my God. That's one of the sweetest things anyone's ever said to me. But what did Tina think? I mean, wives notice things. Seriously, Susan, we're very close. Right. She grabs his head, then guides it to the back of her. You better smell the perfume. Inhale. Oh, better. Yes, much better. Okay. I'm starting to get something. It's working. <sighs> Love the way you suck the air out of his chest cavity. Thank you, doctor. God, you're exciting. Take me. Stat. <laughs> Lift off. <sighs> oh, yowzer. Wait. What? Let's turn the lights off. Why? Well, I, I'm a little self-conscious. I don't want anything to interfere with the fantasy. Okay, fine. Let's let's do the rest in bed. Whatever. Ah. Oh. Ah. What, what? What happened? Foot cramp. Ah. Hang on. Let me walk it off. Ow. 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 Oh. Okay. Ah. Okay. Ah. That's better. Oh. oh, hell. Oh, hell. What? My astroglide. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Use Coke Zero. I don't, I don't care. Got it. Uh. Ow. What? You're on my leg. Uh, sorry. I lost the cap. We'll live. R just roll over. Ro roll over just a bit. A am I on your, your funny... A, a little bit, yeah. Better? Better? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> America's sexiest couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. oh, that feels good. Oh, you too. Oh. Is it everything you imagined? Shut up. Gotcha. <sighs> oh. oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little harder. Okay. A little quicker. You're, little. You're, you're giving me directing notes. No, sorry, sorry. Okay. Any way you want. Oh, mm. Like that is good. Stay with that. No, 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 no. Okay, that, that. Uh. Oh, if, oh, if 84 million people could see us now. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, I'll say. Ooh. Holy shit. Whew. Eggplant emoji. Huh? That was amazing. Yeah, it was. Whew. A little quick, but amazing. Quick? Our foreplay took 30 years. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> How did we hold out that long? I don't know. I really don't. Wish that bellboy were here. What? I, I told him that anticipation heightens the experience, deepens the pleasure. You discuss sex with the bellboy? What is there to talk about with service people? But I was right. This was the best fireworks, stars, and jiffy pop bags exploding. You saw all that? <laughs> yes.
and more. What did you see? What did I see? <sighs> Opening credits. But they were really bright. <laughs> the actor's orgasm. <laughs> so, Craig, let me ask you something. Uh oh. Do you think it was so great because of us, or was it that marathon buildup? Us. Definitely us. How could he be so sure? Because those opening credits I saw, I saw both our names and not just mine. Whose was first? Yours. Oh, Craig. <laughs> I'm happy to go again. Just give me an hour. Oh, now that's my stallion. And, and listen, I don't want you to worry about me making too big a deal about this. I, I know you men do that. You, we're grownups. It's sex. It's, and the best sex partners don't necessarily make for the best life partner. So we shouldn't assign any extra significance to this momentous occasion where it leads, if anywhere. We'll just, we'll have to, you know, just wait and see. Really? You really think that? Yeah. Of course. Mind-blowing sex. Bucket list. Check. Damn. If I knew that, I would have called you 25 years ago. But it, it wouldn't have been as good. We men don't care. <laughs> you want some water? Please. Craig wearing undershirt and boxers exits into the bathroom. What about Jeff and Jill? What about them? How would this affect their relationship? I knew I was getting off too easy. I mean, now that we've changed, I would have to approach her so different. Craig enters with two glasses of water. He's now wearing a hotel bathrobe and he has one draped over his arm for Susan. I don't know. They've already had sex. Assume they get back together, they're, they're now that Cialis couple in the two bathtubs holding hands. Why do they have to be in two bathtubs? What's the point of that? I think the subtle message is, today it's bathtubs, tomorrow coffins. Oh. Take massive doses of Cialis while you can. <laughs> Tell you what, let's see what the writers cook up for Jeff and Jill. We should leave something to the writers. Yeah, I suppose. If we do the show. Right, if. You hungry? The pineapple is all cut up. Oh, I'd love that. He turns on the light, crosses to the fruit basket, and begins dishing out the pineapple lunches. She gets out of bed, dons her bathroom, and joins him. There's nothing like sex to make you feel young again. Yeah, until you go to the bathroom and see handrails everywhere. Yes, but think how much easier it'll be to do it in the shower with their safety handrails. Huh. God, it's been so long since I've slept with someone that can make me laugh. <laughs> Your many partners don't make you laugh? No, nope, not really. You do have many partners? Not anymore. It used to be, I'd meet a hot woman, she'd say, I loved you on residence, and it was right into the sack. Now it's, my parents loved you on residence, and my Viagra sales right past its due date. Poor baby. Maybe you should start dating their mothers. <laughs> it might have come to that. Old guy chasing after young women is sad. In five years, that'll be me. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. How about you? How's your love life? Uh, you are the first man that I've been with in two years, so great. But that's crazy. You must meet hundreds of men. Where? I can't go on dating sites like everyone else. God forbid TMZ or Howard Stern found out I'd replace Congress as the new national joke. Yeah, I can't have that. So I meet men at, God help me, God help me, nostalgia shows. Oh, you do those? Yes, it's come to that. Me and Mr. Ed, both sitting at card tables signing autographs. He gets better lines. 
but you know, they actually, they pay well and the fans are really sweet. It's nice to be able to thank them and for a couple of hours be important again. God, I miss that way more than the sex, which is good because Jesus, you can't believe some of the nimrods who come on to me there, 50 year old men who bring their Bullwinkle Pez dispensers. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that's terrible. That's what my life has become. You want to do residence again, don't you? I don't know. How could you not know? You'd be important again. Paparazzi, swag, no more Mr. Ed. You'd be back in the game. I still have reservations. I'm sure the writers will let you play Jill however you want. It's not creative issues. Then what? I don't want to talk about it. Now you don't want to talk? You talk about everything else. Oh, now we're back to that, huh? Why are you getting so touchy? I I'm just not ready to decide and I don't want to feel pressured. Who's pressuring you? I'm just laying out the pros. I, I know the pros and I know the cons. Is it the looks thing? I, I told you we're not expected to be hot. And now they have filters on those cameras. They'll shoot us through like a horse blanket. It's not that. Then what? It's, it's personal. See, this is the kind of stuff you would do that would drive me nuts. Okay, you, you wanna dredge up the old stuff? Fine. How the hell could you bet Matthew Perry? What the fuck were you thinking? Sorry, you can have the hundred bucks. I'll, I'll give you two if you just leave me alone. Susan, I'm just trying to understand you. If that's possible, from your perspective, I would think you'd jump at doing this show. Well, there are things that you don't know about me. Like what? I can't say. Oh, for Christ's sake. You wanna do the show again? I'm not sure. What? A after all that? Fuck you. Hey, hey, what's happening here? 10 minutes ago, we were having mind blowing sex. Don't you think it's somewhat cruel to tell me how miserable my life is and how it would all magically improve if I did the show and then you're gonna say that you're not interested? We both have to sign on for this. I didn't say I wasn't interested, just that I'm still on the fence. We only found out about it tonight. And maybe if I knew your intentions, that would sway my decision. Oh, my hero, sacrificing Coke Zero to rescue poor little me. You know what, fuck you too. Uh, okay, you know what, I've decided. I don't wanna do the show. Good, then neither do I. Perfect, then it's settled. Not by a long shot, because you really do wanna do the show. I do not, but you sure do. Me, I'm working all the time. I live in Malibu. I'm getting late at least once a year. Why would I wanna go to backwards? Because you were never better than you were with me and you know it. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. Life's too fucking short. You are an ungrateful prick. Me? Let's get real, Susan. If I decide to do the show, I am rescuing you. You have way more to gain from this than me. And if you don't want to do it for whatever secret, personal, private, insane, personal reason, fine, whatever. But don't kid yourself. You may think I'm not as good as you or as driven as you or as smart as you, but make, make no mistake, you need me. Not if I walk away. Which won't mean shit if I walk away first. I hate you. Bullshit, you love me. What? Are you daft? You said so yourself. In your dreams. During one of your extremely rare emotional moments, you put your arms around me and you said in my ear, I love you. Oh, uh, when? That never happened. After rehearsal one night when the whole cast went down to the smokehouse. I, I don't remember that at all. How can you not remember it? You remember everything. Then obviously it didn't happen. Oh, it did. Maybe you're blocking it for some reason. I, I can't block memories. I only wish I could. That's the curse. Every painful moment in my life instantly comes back in vivid, excruciating detail. Then declaring your love was not an excruciating as you thought. No, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. You're fucking with me. Just trying to get inside my head. What? Yeah, that's what you're doing. Very shrewd and sleazy, throw me off, get me to doubt myself, distort reality, gaslight me. Well, guess what? It didn't work, asshole. I don't need to make you crazy. You are crazy. Don't you dare call me crazy. In anger, she throws a piece of fruit at him, splat. Yeah, yeah, that's real sane. He retaliates by flinging a piece of fruit back at her, splat. I never want to see you again. Chuck some fruit at her. The fruit fight is on. 
I close the iron door on you. Indolent has been. Psycho bitch. Now I said it. Psycho bitch. There's a knock at the door. Go away. Go away. I have champagne from CBS Productions. Susan crosses to the door. The bellboy has a bucket of champagne and two flutes. Hi. Did I catch you at a bad... He notices they're just wearing bathrooms. Whoa, eggplant emoji. Why does everyone yell eggplant emoji? It is about time. <laughs> the bell captain owes me money. Okay, you can leave. You know, I knew it would happen. There's something magic about Syracuse. Again, again thank you. Hey, you might want to wipe that fruit off your faces. And you seniors are into some kinky shit. To push Good, night. Good night. Good night. Uh, oh, hey, I, I sampled your show. Wonderful. We can talk about it another time. You were totally awesome, Ms. White. I was? How so? Well, the, look, if you guys are busy, I'll... No, 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 you're already here. Go on. Well, uh, Mr. McAllister, you were good too, but uh, I gotta tell you, Ms. White, you were effing hilarious. And at the end, when everyone forgot your birthday, I don't mind saying I got a little choked up. Oh, huh. well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I was just good? No. No, no, you, you were cool, but Ms. White, whoa, you just crushed it, girl. Give me back my 50 bucks. See, nuance matters, shading matters, subtle facial expressions register. Uh, I could show you my favorite part. Oh, wait, wait, you watched it on your phone? How else do people see it? Tell me again about nuance. Shut up, I crushed it no matter what. Hey, can I get a shot of you two in your robes? No. no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but but to answer your original question, yeah, I think I would watch more of these if they made them. <laughs> you never think of your grandparents having sex, but why not? Bellboy exits. Susan and Craig wipe the fruit off their faces. I'll get dressed and go. Thank you. They both put their clothes back on from opposite sides of the bed. You were the best part of the show. What? You're the reason people tuned in. You were so fresh and original. You did things with lines and reactions that I knew during filming were good, but when I saw them on the air, they were just phenomenal. You lit up the screen. I did? You really think so? It was all I could do as an actor to keep up with you. Thank you, but why are you telling me this? Because after the funeral tomorrow, we may never see each other again. So this could be my last chance to tell you. And thank you, that show changed my life and it never would have happened without your brilliance. Greg, I'm gonna cry. She hugs him and is a little weepy and she holds the hug a long time. I can't believe I'm saying this, but thank God for your process. You have no idea what that means to me. Great. We, we can end the hug. Right. Oh, and if we're coming clean, I'm sorry about your movie career. I'm sorry your movie career didn't take off the way you wanted. For a long time, I was really pissed at you. But looking back, a lot of that was my own hangups. I depended on you too much. And it wasn't fair to you. Thank you. But you did say I love you. Craig, honestly, I, I don't remember that. If I had a jumbo jack 40 years ago, it stays with me. Of course, that's true for anybody who had a jumbo jack 40 years ago. But the point is, I don't, I, I don't believe it ever happened. OK, but it did. His phone rings. He checks the ID. <sighs> Entertainment tonight. Take it. Hello. Yes. Well, we're all very saddened by Danny Ventura's death. He lived to make people laugh and he made the world laugh. I'd say that's a life well spent. Thank you. Oh, oh uh, uh, listen, while I've got you, I'm here with Susan White. Yeah, that's right. She came for the funeral. Anyway, 
Susan worked with Danny for five years. And if you'd like a quote from her, oh yeah, great. Yeah, I'll put her on. They're thrilled to talk to you. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> no comment. Here. What? You can hang up now. Uh, 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 okay. Well, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know either. Thanks, thanks for calling. What the hell was that? I was annoyed that no one asked me for a comment. I didn't say I want to make a comment. Well, that would have been nice to know before I talked you up. You're right. I'm sorry. And what do you mean you have no comment? None? You can't even muster up some prayers for his family bullshit? Like I told you, I was not a fan. So why are you here? Honestly? Yes, honestly. For once tonight, would you tell me something? Let me in? Fine. I came to see you. Me? Don't act so shocked. It was the answer you were hoping for. Not, not hoping. I, 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 uh, oh, yeah, OK, hoping. I wanted to make love to you, finally. Danny's death was just a lucky happenstance. And you came prepared with your little blue pill. I assume that's why you were here as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. But there's still the matter of putting a man into the ground. Ah, details, details. I wanted to see if there was something there between you and me. It has been 25 years of frustration, longing, regrets, resentment. I, I wanted closure. I wanted to either fly to the moon or break the spell and finally be free. So which did it turn out to be? Both, you bastard. Yeah, I pretty much feel the same. So what do we do? Well, I guess this is some of that inner conflict we can use for our art. Oh, fuck our art. Right. I could use another drink, you? No, I'm good. She pours herself another scotch. What regrets? Hmm? You said you've stored up years of regrets. Was leaving the show one of them? Yeah. Knew it. But I don't regret why. Not many people get a chance to make it in movies. I get it. It's not why I left. It's not? But I, I thought... That's what everybody thought. Certainly the cast. I jeopardized their golden goose to seek my own narcissistic dream of superstardom. Ironic that they all thought I made their lives so miserable for five years then resented me for leaving. So chalk it up to more inner conflicts. I just wanted every show, every scene to be the best it could possibly be for everyone. I never went to the writers and asked them to give me someone else's jokes or, or, or give me the laugh instead of the setup or even more screen time. I know. I, I wanted all of us to prosper. A high tide floats all boats. Well, I'm sure if you decide to do the residence again, you'll suddenly become their best friend. Swell, even more pressure. So why did you leave the show? The, um, the last rap party, March 14th. It was getting late. Lots of people had left. He was quite drunk, although everyone was quite drunk by that time. And uh, I was there alone. Elliot, that shithead, was away on business. And I was backstage near where we entered the doctor's lounge, remember? And I was searching for my keys so that I could drive home. And he approached and said, why does McAllister get all the fun? And he kissed me. And I tried to slap him, but he pinned me against the flat and then um, then his hand went up my skirt. Jesus. Have you ever tried to scream and 
nothing comes out and you try and you and you try and not a sound not a peep just air you're just too Look, you don't you don't have to and then his fingers his dirty grimy fingers wiggled and pawed and they finally forced their way in okay i bit him i bit him hard uh, so hard that i broke the skin and he yelped and i didn't care i bit his whole fucking face off he released me and, and i smacked him with my purse and he staggered back and i pushed him away and then i ran out of there although it was more like waddling because my panties were around my thighs and just adding to the indignity the taste of his blood was still in my mouth. And that was the last time I ever set foot on that soundstage or faced him again. Oh my God. Shaking again. God damn it, this memory. It's a fucking curse. Come here. She steps into his arms. Thanks. It feels nice. Of course. So who? Who was it? Yeah. Our dearly departed. He breaks the hug. Danny? May he rest in hell. Holy shit. Yes, that beloved clown who just lived to make the world laugh. I... I, I didn't know. Of course you didn't. That son of a bitch. So I, I couldn't go back there. I just, I couldn't. He hugs her again. No, no, I, I understand. I mean, in fairness, there was this movie option and it was inviting, but still, I suspect I would have stayed on another year at least, but not after that night. And that's why you didn't come back for the last episode or any of the reunions. The night of the big finale. May 23rd, I just sat home and I cried. I know I'm holding this hug too long, but I don't care. Neither do I. Why didn't you tell anybody? I mean, what good would that have done? First off, it would have been a he said, she said situation. He would say that he was just goofing around being zany. He's the funny man, remember? And I'm the uptight psycho bitch who can't tell it, take a joke. I mean, this was long before hashtag me too. We were still in the hashtag me screwed era, which lasted from Adam and Eve until October 15th, 2017. Right. They finally break off the hug. And my blowing the whistle would have caused a scandal and, and that would have certainly tarnished the show. It could survive me leaving a lot easier than weathering a brouhaha like that. All this time we thought it. I know. I'm so sorry. Thanks. We got renewed that year, thanks to you, not in spite of you. I mean, why should the entire cast and crew suffer because of this? Well, like cock sucking motherfucker. Yeah. Well, at least you now have the first line of your eulogy. What? I can't give a eulogy. Not now. Not knowing this. Well, you're expected to. So what? Nothing I wrote applies. He's an inspiration. The world would be a better place if there were more people in it like him. That man was a pig. Well, you've got to say something. And as satisfying as it might be to out him at his own memorial service, that's certainly not the time or the place. Okay, well, how about this? I'm not going. At all? No, and neither should you. Well, we have to go. How do we explain it? Who cares? Let our agents think of something. Well, I must admit that does sound enticing. And it saves me from accidentally applauding when they lower the casket. I'd rather spend the time alone with you anyway. Me too. But without the hashtag. I'll set up for a smiley face. You got it. Although at some point I would like to see the cast again, awkward as it may be. Not when they learn the truth. And look, the fact that you want to see them at all says something too. 
we were a family, sometimes bordering on Ozzy Osbourne's family, but still. Those are the best years of our lives. As the decades go by and there are now fewer of us, I think we all appreciate more just what we share together. Right. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. January 25th, 1994. What happened that day? I did say I love you to you. I, I you, you do remember. It just, it just came back, but Craig, we had had a long day of rehearsal and, and it was the episode where Jeff first declares his love for Jill. And it was a quick flip and you were having trouble making that turn. You couldn't say it without still retaining some of the anger from the earlier part of the scene and you were getting very frustrated. And we all went out for drinks at the smokehouse and you were wrestling with it and I, I, I leaned in and I, I suggested a choice. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So when you said, I love you, you were... Yeah. Giving me a line reading? I'm afraid so. Oh. I remember dates and incidents, but not every little exchange. Right, sure. Okay. But today, June 3rd, will always be remembered as the day I first said it from the bottom of my heart with recognition that it's always been the way that I felt, even when I denied it to myself, and will always feel, regardless of how the two of us end up. I love you, Craig. I love you. There. That's exactly the way I wanted you to say it. I swear <laughs> you're going to drive me batty. You both will. A kiss. Are you sure about this? You're willing to forego all your young partners? I'm tired of waking up next to somebody and still being lonely. I'm tired of feeling dead inside. This is the first day in 30 years I felt stimulated aroused a lot yes i'm sure it's always been you i just didn't realize until well i know syracuse they kiss again so what happens now well we get those two bathtubs hold hands and gaze out the sunset the way you pictured jeff and jill right but at my malibu place and then we empty the tubs on Streisand's beach and tell her to lawyer up. <laughs> oh, we have become Jeff and Jill, haven't we? I always thought we were. Do you think they'd make it this time? Why not? They have chemistry, love. The only thing that could derail them is bad ratings. <laughs> right. But I'd be curious to see what happens to Jeff and Jill, wouldn't you? What do you mean, like in the future? Uh-huh. Oh, so you want to do the show? Yeah, what the hell? Craig, you said it before, you have nothing really to gain. Don't feel that you have to do a selfless act because that's, I want did. That's not why I'm doing it. Do you know I cried during the finale too? You did? Well, not just me, the whole cast, but they were crying over the golden goose thing. I cried for Jeff, who's never going to get the love of his life. Jeff, I, I mean, Craig. Lots of fans were disappointed with the outcome. You didn't do the finale, which again, I totally get now. And it did make the last scene very poignant. In real life, things don't always work out, but Jesus, we were America's sexiest couple. We deserve to be together for Christ's sake. Even if it meant spending the next 20 years throwing fruit. That's why I was crying too. Well, the country has suffered enough the last few years. How about we give them a long awaited happy ending? Still, Craig, I'm, I'm scared. Why? Why? Because my life is a maelstrom. I, I live in a shitty condo. I, I'm getting older. I'm alone. I never had children. And the one thing that I could always cling to my career is evaporating. 
So yes, doing the show would solve a thousand problems, but I'd have to be on that soundstage again and, and walk through those sets again and relive the trauma as if it were happening for the first time over and over again, like Groundhog Day, but by Stephen King. I just, I don't know if I'm strong enough to do it. You are strong, stronger than you think. You're a survivor and you'll have me. I'll comfort you, I'll tease you, I'll piss you off. I'll keep you in a constant state of distraction. The sets may be the same, but this time I'll be different. This time you'll be cherished and adored and every day you'll build a new happy memory. In time, the good will outweigh the bad. And since they sponsor our show now, I'm sure you'll get a gift basket from Lexapro. <laughs> Craig, you're unbelievably sweet, but I can't ask you to do all that. Sure you can. I love you. Boy, you must, because I'm going to be a handful. Look, look, <laughs> you pretty much carried me for five years. Allow me to return the favor for 13 weeks. I don't know what to say. Really? You speechless? <laughs> say yes. How can, how can I pass up a chance to spend every minute with you? Yes. 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 All right. He sweeps her into his arms and they hug. And, and this time I promise I will not hold up rehearsals for hours. Yes, you will. Oh, okay, but not as often. Hey, I may be holding up rehearsals too this time. Really? Oh, then you do take this seriously. That damn bo bellboy is wrong. I'm better than good. Oh, my little artiste. They hug then. Hey, what do you know? I'm ready to go again. Already? It's been less than an hour. Yeah. Hey, so am I. And with no additional help. Me too. Again, without hashtags. That hasn't happened in three... May 8th, 2014. Let's rock this thing. Who says America's sexiest couple can't have gray hair? Or be post-menopausal. You forgot to get the lights. No. Leave them on. Really? Yeah. Why not? Wow. What got into you? Trust and scotch. But mostly trust. You know the real reason we should do the show again? Tell me. To show the world that love can still be new and exciting and romantic at 60. Or 59. They've now stripped down to their underwear. She reaches behind the clasp of her bra. He clutches the sides of his shorts. They stop and look at each other. Well, you ready? Because once we do this, all the mystery is gone. We can never get it back. Take me. Stat. And just as they're about to completely disrobe, blackout. The end.